Welcome to the AthleteShine.com podcast. I'm your host, Stephen Olszewski, and I am joined by Lee Crosby Safety out of New Mexico. How's it going, Lee? It's going good, yourself? Doing great, doing great. Uh, to start it out, so you were a safety out of a D1 school in New Mexico, spent three years at New Mexico, but you weren't recruited at all at high school. How does a D1 talent like yourself not get any love out of high school? Uh, one, because... In the high school, I was like a late bloomer. So I really didn't go to my body till probably my junior year, going to my junior year of high school. So, and then I was, it was my first year playing DB my junior year. So at the same time, I really didn't understand the position. I was still learning going to my senior year. Then even after that, I still didn't have the grades or nothing like that, uh, to even make it out to a Division One or D2, whatever, whatever it was. So, that's what, that's what basically happened. I just, I didn't have a grades or at the same time, I was just a late bloomer. I, it wasn't my time yet. And you went, and you went to one year at junior college, um, and then you went to New Mexico right after. Uh, why New Mexico? Why was that the choice for you? Why New Mexico? Uh, it's funny because I came into Wyoming the night before signing day, but at the same time, I just, I don't know, I was just having second thoughts. It was just something about New Mexico and with Coach McMillan, the defensive back coach, Coach David, Coach Cos- Coach Coswell, the defensive coordinator. That's something that it really grew into me. That I, at my heart, I just like New Mexico was the right decision. So that day of signing day, the next morning, I waited, waited out to like the last minute and signed the papers to New Mexico. I felt like that's where my heart was at. And that's like that was the best option for me. And like I said, going, coming from junior college to the D1 ranks, it has to be quite a quite an quite an adjustment of talent level and such. Well, what was the hardest thing to adjust to? Uh, coming from junior college, I would say it was talent wise because at my junior college we had a lot of talent, a lot of talent. Some of the best talent I ever played around. The hardest thing for me was just adjusting to a new system, to a new type of pace, a new scheme, a new team. I feel like that was the hardest thing for me, just learning everything over, learning a whole new system again. So coming from JUCO to Division One, that's the only thing I feel like it slowed me down, and was the reason I had to restart my first year and set my first year out, which was the best thing for me at the time. And when you came to, Met, to New Mexico, and when you came to, to to New Mexico in 2014, it was New Mexico wasn't really much of a football school. But then once mm-hmm. you started playing 2015 to 2016, you guys you went 7-6 and, and then 9-4 this last season and ended up winning a bowl game this year in the New Mexico Bowl. Uh, what was it yeah. like seeing the rebuild of the New Mexico program? It was great because it was something I wanted to be a part of. I knew coming to my situation, I knew New Mexico didn't have a good background of winning but at the same time, when I came with my visit, I just felt the vibe. I felt like I felt this team was special enough to change this, change this program back around. And I wanted to be a part of it. I wanted to help rebuild. And that's what we've done over the past couple of years. And ultimately, at New Mexico, how will you remember your time there? Oh, I love it. I was able to make some key moments, meet some special guys, meet some great coaches. And the most part, enjoyed, the most part that I enjoyed, I was able to accomplish one of my goals to play Division One football. I don't even play it, but start. And God's going to be able to help my team. And I've seen a quote where you where you said that uh, to be able to play safety, you have to be vocal and confident. Where mm-hmm. do you get your confidence? Where do you get your confidence from and your leadership skills from? Well, I get my confidence from, I just, I don't know if it's ever since growing up. It was just instilled in me through my grandfather. Ever since I first started playing football, he told me never be afraid of anybody. So I didn't. No matter, I was always so growing up. I was always one of the smartest guys on my team. Uh, playing running back, linebacker, even through high school, I was one of the smartest person on my team. But I always had the confidence in me that I don't care how big you are, how fast you are, no matter what. Like I'm confident in myself that I know I can go out there and match you. Yeah, and just going back to the junior college level. You were talking about confidence. Was it ever was it ever hard to have that confidence when you were down in junior college? Did you ever think, am I ever going to make it to the D1 level, or am I, or am I just going to be in junior college forever? 
No, not even. No, I didn't even think about that one time. I was made positive with myself. I knew I had the talent, and I knew I was a hard worker, so I knew when my time come, I knew it was going to come. I never, like, I never second thought it. And when it finally came, finally came I was just happy, and I was blessed to be in a position I was to go and out there and reach one of my goals, come as one of my goals. But it was no doubt in my mind that it wasn't going to happen. What would you say your strengths and your weaknesses are? Uh, for one, for my size, I'm probably one of the strongest persons from junior class to now on my team. And two, like I'm one of the most physical person, one of the most physical physical athletes out there on the field. No, no matter like no matter what, I'm gonna come down. I'm gonna push you on the, on the uh, line of scrimmage. I'm gonna help in the run support, and I just help. I'm gonna come down, and make sure you feel it. And then I think I'm a versatile athlete. I can play corner, I play safety, I play nigga, I play it all. And you you played at the Tropicana All Star Game earlier this month. How was yeah. that experience? It was good. Like it's it's funny that you talk about it because I didn't get the pass the first day because my pads came in late. But the second day I got the practice and I made myself known. Like I went out there, I uh, handled my business and he, he was a guy who probably won the MVP. I I even shut him down both times we went. Like I made my presence felt. But then the the uh, game day <laughs> it was a funny story because Come game time, I didn't realize my shoulder pads was missing, so I didn't get the chance to play in the, in the actual game that day. So it was like it was, it was just a long week for me, just as far as that. But at the same time, that the one time I did get to go out there and show my talents, I went out there and made my name known. And like, what what did you want to show the scouts the most? Oh, I want to show them that like no matter what school, what conference you came from, like at New Mexico, I wanted to make a Represent the, uh, not only the name of my bat, but the name of my front. We don't have a, so much of a good background, but it's talent down here. Like, we have some talent down here in New Mexico, and I want to know. I want everybody to know that. And who uh, who would you say you try to model your game after? Uh, one person that I do like is Tyler Matthew. Earl, and Earl Thomas. One way I said because like, I feel like Tyron Matt, he's a versatile. He can go out there and play corner, or you can move him back to safety, or move him down to a slot. He's not the biggest, he's not the fastest, but his confidence level is higher than probably anybody out there. He, he, he's fearless. He know he match up, but he know where we line him up at. He gonna go out there and compete. And no person I really like is Marcus Peters too. That's because his competitive level, like, that's one person I really love. Like, he got out there and competes at every play, no matter who you are. And if you try to model your game at a tire, Matthew, do you have a nickname? Do you have a nickname like the Honey Badger? Oh, no, not even. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, one, hey. The, I would mean, just keep it, keep it, keep it, uh, keep it simple, but. My some of my teammates they all call me El Cinco though like that's like the only nickname I got so like <laughs> that's kind of funny. Hey, we'll roll with that one. We'll roll with that one. Uh, one more question here: What would you bring to a pro football team, and why should a team take a chance on you? Oh, uh, one, I'm gonna come in on I'm be a hard worker. That's something that's been instilled to me, instilled in me since I first started playing football. One, they would get no problems. Two, I'm gonna come out there and compete each and every play, and I'm gonna no matter where it is, I'm gonna find a way to help the team. No matter special teams, defense, safety, corner, nickel, whatever. You, I you play linebacker, <laughs> whatever you need, I'm gonna come in and show you why you made the right choice of giving me a, a chance. Hey man, I just want to thank you for taking a little time out of your night to do this interview, and definitely good luck in the future.